since at least the 2nd century AD, when Lucian of Samosata wrote A True Story, perhaps the first science fiction, we know that humankind has looked up at the stars and wondered, is anyone up there? And ever since the invention of the telescope, that quest has gone on in earnest. On Earth, we have created SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, and space agencies the world over have sent probe after probe into our solar system looking for any sign of life in order to answer that crucial question, are we alone in the cosmos? And it may be that recently the Perseverance team at NASA discovered the strongest evidence that extraterrestrial life has existed, at least in the past, on Mars. In a tiny patch of ground roughly a meter square bearing the colorful names Chayava Falls and Neret Vavalis, blemishes referred to as leopard spots and poppy seeds indicated the presence of potential biosignatures. These tiny blemishes on the millimeter to submillimeter scale are reaction fronts enriched in ferrous iron phosphates and sulfide minerals, perhaps vivianite and grigite. And these substances, along with their poppy seed and leopard spot traces, are common indicators of microbial activity here on Earth. Now before going any further, it is important to note that these are not actually confirmed biosignatures. NASA is not claiming that they have discovered life, but they have perhaps discovered the best evidence to date. So what exactly did NASA come across? Well, in a paper titled Redox Driven Mineral and Organic Associations in Jezero Crater Mars, they note that they came across physical indicators of processes commonly associated with microbial life on Earth. They found these bright patches, which are known as leopard spots, they're only about a millimeter in size, and they found these considerably comparatively smaller dark patches known as poppy seeds. Importantly, the distribution of these leopard spots and poppy seeds is irregular. If they had been formed by geological processes of some kind, there should be a broader and more even predictable distribution. But the fact that they are irregular follows patterns associated with life. In the same way that in a forest one would find uneven scatterings of plants, fungi, microbes, and fauna from one area to another. Life doesn't follow geological forces, it follows resources. Not just food and water, but shade and temperature and opportunities to reproduce. These patches are likely evidence of a process known as redox in short, or more appropriately, oxidation reduction. Google AI defines oxidation reduction as a type of chemical reaction involving the transfer of electrons between atoms or molecules. During a redox reaction, one substance loses electrons and is said to be oxidized, while another substance gains those electrons and is reduced. These reactions are fundamental to many natural processes and technologies, including cellular energy production, photosynthesis, combustion, and the function of batteries and corrosion. So redox is the movement of electrons from one atom to another, and when this happens, energy is lost in the electron, it is exchanged. And all life on Earth has been harvested in the exchange of electrons like this since the beginning of life, something scientists believe occurred at least three billion years ago, though there is mounting evidence that life began on Earth even before then. And the world of Mars, roughly 3 billion years ago, was very different from the world as we see it today. 3 billion years ago, Mars had a much thicker atmosphere, and there was a great deal of water on its surface. It was most likely always a considerably cooler world than Earth, but evidence indicates that its climate was more like the Arctic, more extreme than Earth, but definitely livable. But somewhere in Mars' geologic history, it lost its magnetic field which shielded it from the depredations of solar wind. And over time, much of its atmosphere was lost, literally blown away by solar wind into the depths of space. As Mars' atmosphere thinned, water evaporated more easily, eventually worked its way to the upper part of the atmosphere and was lost as well. At least, that's the current thoughts. Though, there is also mounting evidence that there is a considerable amount of water locked underneath Mars now in liquid or ice form. There have even been occasional signs that in some of Mars's more extreme locations, such as deep within Valles Marineris, the largest canyon in the entire solar system, there may be occasional springs of liquid water. 
Given that Mars' atmosphere is only 1% that of Earth, though, I doubt it could last very long. Once it made it to the surface, it would quickly evaporate. So, it's not like we're likely to find ponds teeming with life down there, at least not if those ponds are actually on the surface. Now, the paper was a large collaborative effort with dozens of contributing authors. I cannot possibly cite them all here. However, you'll find a link to it in the description of this video. This paper is very good science. In fact, one could say it's science at its best because the authors approach it with a null hypothesis, which means they looked at this potential biosignature and attempted to disprove that it's life. They examined as many ways as they could find and think of to explain the presence of those potential biosignatures with natural causes unrelated to life. And there are ways to produce the chemical reactions required to make poppy seeds and leopard spots that do not require life, but they require fairly high temperatures of at least 120 C. Temperatures that may have been fueled by hot springs, which themselves would have been fueled by some kind of geological, perhaps volcanic activity in the region. However, the data from the Perseverance rover indicates that no such activity ever occurred in the region. The Jezero crater was geologically stable, and the landscape and the water here should have been cool as the rest of the typical Martian environment. These kinds of chemical reactions are particular about the kind of circumstances they will happen in. But while it might be rare for a natural non-living environment to cause such chemical reactions, these reactions are pretty much par for the course for living things. They're things that microbial life even here on Earth does on a daily basis. In fact, all living things derive their energy by promoting the movements of electrons from one chemical to another. So, do these tiny features, these poppy seeds and leopard spots, indicate there was life on Mars? Well, contrary to some of the sensationalism that is so popular on social media and has infected some YouTube videos and blogs and whatnot, the answer is a resounding maybe. Quite simply, not yes and not no. There may be other abiotic chemistries that can cause poppy seeds and leopard spots that we don't know about, at least not yet. Circumstances in Mars geologic history may have arisen that could cause these features, something that we would never anticipate because we have no parallel for it here on Earth. Mars is another world after all. On the other hand, poppy seeds and leopard spots are common biosignatures of microbial life on Earth. And three billion years ago, when Mars had oceans, rivers, streams, brooks, warmer temperatures, and a much denser atmosphere, Mars and Earth had a lot in common. And in fact, if these are biosignatures, it would indicate that life began at roughly the same time on Mars that it did on Earth. So, according to good science, it is very possible that life did arise on Mars. Could it have become complex? Like the small plants we see beside this little Martian brook in this image here? Maybe. But I'm very certain that, at this point, any scientist would even settle for solid indicators of microbial life. The only way to be sure is to get the samples back to Earth, where better labs can make an assessment. I mean, the assessments are, at this time, only being done with the scientific equipment aboard the Perseverance. And while the little Mars rover the size of an SUV is a remarkable feat of engineering, and an amazingly self-contained lab for what it is, its capabilities cannot match those to be found here on Earth. And first we have to even see if we can get the samples back to Earth because, well, the present US government wants to make massive cuts to NASA's budget, which is a crying shame because the space agency, which was once the envy of the world, would be virtually relegated into obscurity. And mankind's greatest, perhaps most defining endeavor, the determination to reach out and touch the stars along with it. Perhaps bringing back the samples will be undertaken by a private corporation. Or who knows, the Chinese have their own plan to bring back samples from Mars. One or the other, I think somebody is going to accomplish this. And what if it does in fact turn out that it is conclusively demonstrated that our little poppy seeds and leopard spots from Chayava Falls are indeed biosignatures? What then does that tell us? Perhaps Mars and Earth were two very rare exceptions in a cosmos hostile to life. Or, perhaps life is fairly common, and if given an environment that is suitable and the resources, life will inevitably emerge. For my part, I tend to think the latter hypothesis is more likely, and in fact, given that so many creatures on Earth are pretty intelligent, that even the emergence of intelligent life is fairly common. But, intelligent life capable of building tools, and capable of developing complex symbolic communication necessary to establish 
knowledge, science, and technologies. These things are likely far rarer, which is why the universe appears so empty. But that too is only hypothesis, and only time will tell. I guess, to ultimately know, we'll have to see if those samples, or perhaps the Chinese samples, can be gotten back to Earth sometime, where a far more in-depth analysis can finally be conducted, and perhaps finally give us some conclusive answers. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions below.